Now we're getting ready to perform the caloric test. It's usually the last test that we do in the VNG test battery. I'm going to be blowing some air into my patient's ears. You can see that she's angled at 30 degrees. That's the proper angle to have her lateral canals in the right position to allow us to stimulate the ears properly. This is a test for uh, bilateral peripheral vestibular lesions, and so we're going to be testing each of her ears individually. All right, so tests, we're going to do that caloric test now, okay? And so what's going to happen is I'm going to have this, it's called an irrigator behind me, and it has an otoscope, like what the doctor looks at in, in your ear with, right? Mm -hmm. But it's going to be blowing some air. It's kind of warm air. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring that into your ear. It sounds kind of loud. So you can get used to that. You'll eventually tune that out. And it's going to feel a little bit warm. I'm going to start blowing the air in there. I'm going to have this cover on the goggles. Your eyes are going to be wide open. I might have to keep reminding you of that because sometimes it's hard to remember mm -hmm. when you're in the dark to keep your eyes open. And then I'm going to start blowing that air. It's going to last 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. For the first 20, 30 seconds, you're not going to feel anything at all. You're just going to hear that noise and you're going to feel that warm air. After about 30 seconds, the fluids inside of your ear, they're going to start to move because I've heated them up. And so you're going to start to feel like you're turning. Okay. That's completely mm -hmm. normal. Don't worry about the motion. It's going to go away as soon as, you know, shortly after we stop the test, that'll go away, okay? okay. One other thing that we're going to do is I'm going to give you a task. So I'm going to keep you busy mm -hmm. after the test is done while I'm recording the, the data or your eye movements on the software. So your task is going to be that you're going to name people's mm -hmm. names mm -hmm. that start with a certain letter of the alphabet. Okay. So I'm going to call out, say, M. And you're going to say Michelle, mm -hmm. Mary, and Mike. And you're going to try to name as many uh, names as you can. If you run out of names, I'll throw another mm -hmm. letter out. So you'll do that. Don't worry. There's no right or wrong answer. That's just a task to help keep you busy. Okay. And then one last thing is that uh, after I've stopped the air and you're doing your naming and I'm looking at your eyes, about 10 or 15 seconds into that process, a light is going to come on inside of the goggle. Mm -hmm. When you see that light come on, just look at it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and then you'll know when we're done with the test because I'm going to take the cover back off and then we're going to take a break mm -hmm. for four or five minutes and then we'll proceed to do the second out of the four. Okay, okay. so four all together. Warm air each ear, then cool air each ear, and then we'll be done. Okay. All right? Yes. Any questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right, then I'm going to put the cover on, and we're going to get ready to start the test. Yes. So here we go. So the irrigator is now running. It has reached its proper temperature of 48 degrees. It beeped. It meant I was ready to go ahead and start the test. So here we go. Are you ready, Tess? Yes. All right. First, get a really good look in your ear. So I'm just going to take the otoscope. Remember, you're going to feel that air now, and it's mm -hmm. warm, okay? Yep. So I'm just going to... Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let me get a look in there. Okay, as soon as I can see your eardrum, right there, I'm going to go ahead and start the Starting test now. From I know it's a little warm. Okay. Yeah. One hundred and ten. So nothing is happening yet. You shouldn't feel anything other than the air. Mm -hmm. One hundred. Okay, so now you might start to feel like you're turning towards me a little bit. If you start to feel that, you can let me know. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you feel like you're turning towards me? Yes. That's a good, normal thing. That's a good response. So mm -hmm. we're going to be able to deal with it. I'm here to help you. Okay? Okay. 70. I only have a few more seconds left, and then this irrigation is going to be done. Five seconds. 60. Okay, so don't close your eyes, whatever you do, okay? Remember, we're going to leave our eyes open at this point. Now tell me what you feel. You feel like you're turning towards me a little bit? Yes, I am. Okay, so I'm going to put my hand here so that you know I'm here. I want you to name somebody's name for me that starts with the letter C, as in Charlie. Uh, Charlotte, Cecile, Carla, Klaus. Okay, let's try the letter D, as in David. And daughter, and... 30. 
<laughs> okay, you're doing fine. In a few seconds, the response should start to slow down a little bit. Yes. 20. And then the fixation light should come on. There yes. it is. Yes. So now I want you to just stare at that light for me. Yes. We're almost done. You only have 10 seconds left. You're doing really good. Okay, and now the fixation light went off, so you start to feel that little bit of that motion again, okay? Mm -hmm. And one second left. Zero. And done. Very good. I'm going to take the cover off now, and you're going to take a break for five minutes. Ooh. You did amazing. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's the beep. That means that our irrigator is ready to go. Tess has taken a five-plus minute break now to let her ear come back to room temperature. So. We are ready to go now. We're going to do the second one in the test. So this time we're going to do the left ear with the warm irrigation. So here we go. And I'm just going to get in here and get a good look. 110. Perfect. You okay? Yes. Very good. 100. Still okay? Yes. Feeling any motion yet? Yes. Which way? Towards you. Oh, very good. Okay. Yeah. It's just looks like it's just starting. This is not yeah. too bad yet right now. It's starting to get a little faster. Yes. Okay, very good. We have about 15 seconds left, so we're doing real well. Hang in there. Okay. All right, down to five seconds. Remember to keep your eyes open. Okay, I'm gonna take the irrigator out. Don't close your eyes and let's start our task again. So this this time let's start with the letter M for Michelle. Megan, Max, Mona, Marina, Mike, uh, Michael. Oh, that's very good. Let's try T. Tove, Thomas, uh, Tina. Okay, you're good. <laughs> let's relax just for a second. We're gonna now wait again for that fixation light to come on so mm -hmm. you still feel like you're spinning quite a lot oh, yes okay yes. so let's give it some time to relax and any minute now we should see the fixation light yes. there it is so stare right at that light when you're staring at the light the response should feel like it gets a little slower for you because yes. the fixation that reduces that response a little bit and now just a few more seconds Five more seconds. Hang in there. We're just watching the response recover. Zero. Now we've reached zero. Your second test is done. And I, on the software screen, now have a monothermal warm screening threshold. So already at this point, I have an indication of what the overall result might be, which for you is 17%. And so far, so good. Looks like everything is working just the way that it should. So I'm going to take the cover off, and we're going to take another one of those five-plus-minute breaks, okay? Okay. You feeling all right? Yes. All right, good. Okay, so now we're going to start the cool irrigations. We finished both of the warm irrigations. The irrigator is cooling off, getting to its temperature of 24 degrees. So as soon as it beeps, we'll be ready to go. I'm going to put the cover on the goggles to get tests ready. You feeling okay? Great, we heard the beep in the background, so we are ready to go. All right, so let me get a good look in your ear. All right. Counting down from 120. Okay, so how are you feeling? I'm okay. All right. Not feeling any motion just yet, but it's going to come in a few seconds. Just start turning. Yeah, which way do you feel like you're turning this time? Away from you. That's correct. With the cold air, you feel like you're turning in the opposite direction. Very good. All right, keep your eyes nice and wide open for me. Okay, about a little more than halfway done. Good. About 15 more seconds. Down to the last five seconds. All right.
right, now I'm, okay, I'm gonna pull the irrigator out. Remember to keep your eyes wide open for me. Yes. And your letter is S for Sam. And Sam and Sarah and Sarah and Sophie and Simon. Okay, and try the letter T. Tom, Thomas, Tom, Tina. Okay, that's great. Let's rest a little bit, see if we can slow that response down. Still feel like you're turning the same amount or does it seem to be slowing down a little bit for you? Okay, so in a few seconds, the light's gonna come on. There you go. And just take a stare at that light for me. That, again, should make the response a little less when you're looking at the light. And now the light's gonna go off again and then the response is gonna pick back up a little bit. Got about 10 more seconds. Hang in there, keep your eyes nice and still. And perfect. All right, so now we got the irrigator running again. You've just finished your third break. So you had your, your third five minute break and I'm sure you're very happy now. We're ready to do the very last one. Okay, so I'm gonna put the cover on again. This time I'll be going into your right ear with some cold air. We're on the last one, so we want everything to be perfect. So remember, whatever you do, don't close your eyes. Okay, so keep your eyes nice and wide open. I'm gonna come in here, take a look. All right, once I got a nice view of your eardrum, I'm gonna start the test. All right, so nothing should be happening yet. One hundred and ten. Tell me when you start to feel that motion. Oh, I'm just starting, yes. Okay, which direction? I'm turning away from you. Okay, so to the left, which is correct with the right ear with cold air, so that's good. Ninety. We are halfway through, so we've got another 25 seconds to go. You're doing good. Does it feel about the same motion as you felt when we did the other ear? Mm, yes. About equal, that's good, okay. So now we're down to the last 10 seconds. So here we go. 60. I'm taking the irrigator out. Remember, don't close your eyes, really important. Okay, let's start your tasking. Let's try the letter L. Last Lona Lena Lena Lona Bo. You know a lot of L's. Okay, let's try O. Oh, that's a tricky one. Let's oh. try O. Ole, Ole, Ove, Odette. Okay, that's good. Let's take a rest now. We're going to wait for that light to come on. Mm -hmm. Our last time should start to slow down that motion pretty soon. There we go, there's our light. Look right at the light. Okay, and now the light's gonna go off. You're gonna feel a little bit of that motion again. Okay, just a few more seconds. So three, two, one, and you are finished. And my software is now gonna show me a final response, which Looks very normal, so you did a wonderful job, so good for you. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we've completed the caloric test. Uh, we had a really nice, healthy, normal response on this patient. So we can see that all four of the caloric tests were done. We have nice, strong nystagmus responses down here. We can see that the time is going this way. So at time zero, there was no response because it's taking a while for the irrigation to heat up the fluids. And then eventually we start to see these dots or this nystagmus building as we're heating the ear and then it reaches a peak. It might be difficult to see, but there's a little dotted box there. That dotted box is the peak response. And so we wanna see what was their peak response for each of the four different irrigations and then we compare them together. And that's what gives us this calculation for unilateral weakness, how much of a difference was there between the ears and then directional preponderance, where the beats to the right stronger than the beats to the left. 
And she got values of 9% for unilateral weakness. So she got a green check mark because that's well below the 25% cutoff. And for directional preponderance, she got 9% left beating, which is again well below the 30%. So she got a green check mark. And then the last value that's really important is the one here total SPV or the total response. She has 70 degrees. If the total responses are too small, then the calculations be become inaccurate. We call that a bilateral weakness. But she has 70, so that's great. You need to be 22 to 24. So she's well above that. And then the only other thing that's important to look at on the screen is here you can see this yellow bar. That's the time period where the fixation light came on. So what should happen, and it did, is you have this large nystagmus, and then the light comes on. She looks at the light. That reduces the response quite a lot. So she's able to have what we call fixation suppression. So she's suppressing the response, which she did. And then when the light goes off, you can see the response starts to recover. So this is a beautiful test, about as perfect as they come. So this is an example of a patient that has a unilateral caloric weakness. And we can see her two right irrigations, so the right cool and the right warm, her responses are very small compared to her responses on the left side where her responses were much larger. So we can see the nystagmus, the slow phases are very small with both right cool and right warm and significantly larger with left warm and left cool. So her calculation shows a 55% unilateral weakness and a very small amount of directional preponderance. So there's no error in the test. It's just a pure right caloric weakness. Um, and then she has 31 degrees of overall nystagmus. So that's enough to rel reliably um, analyze the test because you don't want to have too small of responses because then the calculations, they suffer a little bit from the numbers being too close together. But once you get past like 22 or 24, you can really rely on the results. So she has 31. So this is just a nice example of a patient with a right unilateral caloric weakness.